Now, given that we have understood the basics of the select query, right? We have understood the very basic things about the select query. Now comes another interesting question. Let's think of it as a task, right? So when we ran the select queries in the previous video, we got a flood of results, right? There because there are 388K or so movies present, right? We got all of them printed one after the other. That's almost impossible for anyone to go through. Now imagine if you're building an app, right? Imagine if you're building an app or a website, right? Where we want a system where you have the first page, let's say this is your app or website. Let's assume this is your first page. Your first page, let's assume, has data about some 20 movies, right? Your first page has some data about 20 movies. Then you have a next button here. Let's assume you have a next button. This is first page here. This is second page, third page, so on. Let's assume on each page we have 20 movies, information about 20 movies, okay? Somebody can click the next, then you'll get data about next 20 movies, right? Again, next, next 20 movies, and so on and so forth. Right? Makes sense, right? Imagine if you have an app on your smartphone, right? You'll have some 20 movies information here printed and then there will be a next button, okay? Or a button like this. You just click on this, it goes to next 20. Now here, what do you need? Here you need to obtain, you need to obtain data of only the first 20 movies. The data of only the first 20 movies, right? To fill the first screen, then to fill the second screen, you need data about the next 20 movies. Right? So screen one, so screen one will have data about the first 20 movies. Screen two or page two here, right? Will have data about the next 20 movies. Screen three or page three will have information about the next, th next 20 movies. And so on and so forth. Right? Makes a lot of sense, isn't it? This is how web apps or websites are designed. Now, can SQL help us do this? Because there is no point for me to run the three, to run the select query and get 388k results every time. Right? And most people may not even care about all the 388,000 results. They may only see the first two or three pages. So why bother about obtaining all of this data, which is time consuming, which is data intensive? Right? So here comes a very useful trick. Let's go and learn the trick. That trick is called the limit keyword. Okay, so let's go here. So the trick is called the limit keyword here. Here I can say select whatever columns I want. These are all the columns that I want from the table, right? This is my table name, right? These are my column names. This is again a select query. For the same select query, I can add no more keywords. I can say limit, limit is a keyword here. And these are the number of results I want. So when I when I when I run this query, this will result in the first 20 rows, the first 20 rows in this result set. So when I run select name comma rank score from movies, let's assume I get 388,000 results or a, a row set, right with 388,000 with 388,000 rows. The moment I say limit 20, this basically says the number of rows that you should limit to. It will only take the first 20 rows. It will only take the first 20 rows. It will only take the first 20 rows and generate a new result set and return that. Okay, that's what this is. Again, we all know the select column names from table. We are just adding a new piece here which is limit, which is a keyword, and 20, which is the number of rows that we want. The moment we say this, it will only give us the first 20 rows, right? So let's run this now. Okay. Okay, let's copy that first so that there are no errors. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's copy this. Okay, copied it. Now go here, paste it. Now, I only get 20 rows, right? I only got my 20 rows. Very good. These are the first 20 rows of the table, right? Because I wanted only the first 20 rows amongst all and I wanted name and rank score. Very, very simple, right? This makes far more sense. Now I can see, okay, this is the, this is, this is the first movie. It doesn't have a rank score. This is the second movie. 
doesn't have a rank score or has a null rank score. Then there is a third movie called Simple Dollar, which has a rank score of 6.4, so on and so forth. Now comes the fun thing, right? Now, look at this, right? This is the table that I have. This is my original table, right? With 388,000 rows, right? This total length is some, let's say, 388K plus, whatever that number is, right? So when I ran the query the first time, right? When I said select star, whatever, select column names from, okay, when I ran this query, select column names from movies limit 20, I got the first 20 rows, right? Now, now comes the fun part. If I want the next 20 rows, remember we had this page structure that we talked about for the website, right? So I got my first 20. If I want the next 20, what do I do? Right? After I got the next 20, if I want, again, the next 20, the third 20, this will be my page one. This will be my page two in the web app or the mobile app. This will be page three and so on and so forth, right? If I want the next 20 rows, what do I do? It's very simple. There is a command. There is a very interesting command. Okay? So here, here, I'll explain that, right? I'm saying select the column names from the table name. Limit 20, we have seen this, right? Limit is again a keyword. I'm saying 20. There is an other keyword called offset, right? What offset does is this. If I want, so let's assume this whole query is as is. Same thing till here. It's the same thing till here. I'm just adding one more component here, which is offset 40. So when I say, when I say select, select whatever column names from movies, limit 20, offset 20, let's say. So to get the next 20 rows, see, to get the first 20 rows, I have to say, select whatever column names I wanted, right? Whatever column names I wanted from the table name, right? Limit 20. Here, I'll have the same thing, but I'll say offset, offset 20. When I say offset 20, what it means is it says, Ignore the first 20, offset it by 20, and then start the count, right? So this whole thing, this whole thing will be present here also. This whole thing is present here. If you look here, right, the same thing is there. I'm just adding an offset. When I add an offset, what it means, offset basically means, but okay, offset it by this much. Ignore the first 20, print the next 20 for me. If I say again, offset, same thing, everything same. If I set offset 40, if I say offset 40, what it means is that ignore the first 40 and print the next 20, right? That's what it means. So offset basically says how many rows from the start to ignore, right? And that's all offset does. Very, very simple. Nothing very fancy here. Right? So now we got, okay, let's look here. Okay, I said offset 40, now let's say offset 20. So this will give me the second page because I'm saying ignore, what am I saying here? I'm saying ignore the first 20 rows and then give me the next 20 rows. Okay, and for these next 20 rows from movies, I want the name and rank score. Very simple, right? Here again, this is the declarative nature of SQL. You're not saying how to get it. You're saying what you want. Very, very important. So this is my second page, right? If I want my third page, this is my third page. And limit actually makes things readable, very readable, because it will give you a subset of results that you care about. So limit and offset are two very, very useful keywords that are used a lot when you have this, when you want only the top 20 results or you want a subset of results with some offset, used a lot in SQL and databases in general.